I'm putting this at the beginning of the video. So there's a couple things I should talk about that wasn't in the video. Um, so first things first, if you're changing brake lines when doing this kit, of course, you're going to have to change brake lines up front at the very least, but the rears too. I thought it was a great idea to undo the brake lines and let them drain because I knew I had a whole last year's season's worth of racing and driving on that fluid and it was going to be really crappy fluid so I wanted it to drain out as much as possible to save me time during um, bleeding. Don't do that. <laughs> do not let your lines just leak out. Um, when you go to replace your line, make sure that's the first thing you do or the last thing you do, whatever order of operations that you do so that you lose as least amount of fluid as possible. What happened with me, I let my lines leak out for quite like hours, all right? And eventually air made its way up into the ABS system. So when I went out for my first test drive, touching the brakes, they were like, before you would you'd maybe press like 10% and you would like, it would bite and you would like start slowing down. Like 50%, like you were, like that's hitting it. You like, you already know the way your car is now. And at the time it was like 70% to like get that initial 10% bite as it was before. And I was pretty confused because I bled them brakes. Like I bled them, I bled them. So I went out for a little drive and it, it didn't even feel safe. So I went home um, and I re-bled them again. It felt a little bit better after that. And I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I went out for a drive and I was like, these still don't feel right. I was like, maybe because it's six piston and not changing out the master cylinder to something bigger, because on older cars you have to do that and stuff. I've never dealt with it, but that's what I read. I was like, maybe, and I went through and looked, everybody running the racing line and the stop tech and whatever kits. They never changed out, like our, our master cylinder is sufficient enough. So I'm thinking, I was like, damn. I was like, I, I was um, talking to a buddy on Instagram that I went to basic training with, and he was like, said something about ABS, and I was like, yeah, well, I did let my lines, you know, leak out for a while. Maybe I did get air into the ABS. He's like, well, when I have to bleed ABS, I go out to like a dirt road and slam on the brakes, get the ABS to activate, and when it does that, it'll it'll push that air and you just bleed the brakes afterwards. So that's what I wound up doing. If you don't have dirt roads, then I don't know what to tell you. You have to wait till it rains and go out and skid your tires or something, but, or just don't let your lane, your lines run dry. Just when you go to do your lines, switch them out real quick and, and let it rip. You just bleed them from there, but don't, don't let them sit out and leak like I did. You have to go out and there's some things in VDC, VDCS or OB, OBD 11 you can go into and uh, run your ABS pump and do some other things that a dealer would do for you. Um, but I'd recommend just avoiding that whole thing. Don't let your lines leak out. Good to go. On the second thing, also about brake lines, the front lines at Woolwood supplies are 20 inches. OEM is 26 and it goes from that spot on the, the frame that comes around the strut and then down to the brake. With these, you can't go around it. If you go full lock, then it's, it's stretching the line. So you have to go behind it. Well, then at that point you need a zip tie and it could get caught up on something. It's gonna be chafing, you know, whatever. So a friend of mine, well, a new friend that I met on the internet while I was deployed, um, he put this little wood kit on probably three weeks ago, and he was the one telling me about the lines before I even put mine on. So, he doesn't like the way they look. I don't look like the way they will look, but there's other people running the kits that have it behind the, sh the strut, been running it for quite some time. I've never had an issue. But he decided to email Will Wood with pictures and CC'd me in the email, and they're gonna send him lines, and they want me to send pictures, and they're gonna send me lines. So I think they're gonna update their kits on their site, and uh, send out 26 inch lines instead of 20 inch so they can go in the right spot. So if you go to order this kit, um, I don't know if you can really order directly from them. I didn't, I got it from TH Motorsports, but they don't even have it on their site anymore. So you're, you're gonna wanna get it from Summit. And right now, like as of right now, they're selling it like $300 cheaper than what I paid for it on Black Friday, which was $100 cheaper than the normal. I think the normal is like 1650 and the last time I looked, they were at 1250, but like three days ago, they were at 
exactly 1200 so the the price is going up and down i don't know if it has anything to do with this corona but it's shoot them an email if you're going to order the kit make sure you get 20 cents 26 inch lines and call it a day i'm gonna stop rambling this video is like 45 minutes long it's the longest video i ever put out on youtube but i hope you guys like it i mean it ain't nothing exciting it's just a diy but um waiting for this first track day to pop up i'll really put these to the test let you guys know what I think. But so far, so great. It's been almost a week, and they feel great. Now that they're bled properly and everything, like they feel, they're like monstrous. I haven't like gotten super hard on them because there's, there's no point to do that on the street. But like slowing down from like 120 down to like, I don't know, the speed limit, 45, you get down pretty quick. <laughs> it's nice with it. Um, and you can really feel the bite. If you do a lot of brake boosting, you can, like you're gonna have to like retrain your left foot because of how the extra is. It's really nice, it's really nice. So anyway, back to the video. Hope you guys like it, drop thumbs up. Questions in the comments. Thanks for watching. Yo, all right guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing something I've been so anxious to do since I got back from this deployment. So we have the Wildwood kit here, ready to go in. Um, I put the rotors together last night in anticipation of this. You have the PCs together. You can safety wire them as well. They have holes made for it. I don't have enough to do them, so I'm leaving it off for now. But they're nice and torqued. Got some 272 Loctite. They go to 13 foot-pounds. And uh, I did both. They are directional rotors, so the veins are like directionally veined. So you have to follow which way the arrows point, and then obviously the, uh, the calipers tell you which way they go as well. So there's, there's that. Um, we got wheel studs going on from Racing Line. Boom. People say that these aluminum lugs don't last very long. They're made just to look pretty, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll be installing these as well. I'll be doing weight differences uh, for the front calipers, for the front rotors, the rear rotors. Sitting over here, I got new rear brake lines from 034. I got new front lines from... Um, Willwood, we come with the Willwood kit. I got Carbotech AX6 pads are made for autocross. Um, they should be here within a couple of hours. And then we have wherever I put, yeah, we got Ice Sweep 2000 series pads for the rear. Um, yeah, so we got a bunch of stuff going on today. I'm going to go ahead and do one side of the car, I'm going to do the rear. Uh, one rear and one front and then show you guys how to do it that way I can get a little bit of you know actually doing it it's gonna be fun I mean the rears are simple take the bracket off replace the rotor replace the pads put the bracket back on change out the brake line good to go um, I don't have anybody else here to bleed the brakes so we'll be doing that like way later in the day once my roommate gets back or my neighbor or somebody that's available to come help but uh, the most difficult part about this whole thing, you can see this is the bracketry kind of put together. And you see I got these these washers on here and I have, they came with a ton. So with these washers here, when they connect, this will like center. You got to get the caliper center over the rotor. So when we install it, we'll tighten everything down, not torqued, but tighten down and then measure the distance inside to make sure that the rotor is centered in here and you'll do that by changing out these shims and I think the height might have something to do with it too and I got other washers I can change you can see those guys right there so I can it said to start with this uh, this big black one and then put two on and it should be good but this this one right here in the back is gonna be the, the most so I put all of them are. Each one of them have, I think, four. Hopefully it won't take four. I'm going to put two on to start. 
and we'll work our way from there doing some measurements. And then Woolwood did send a whole, I got this whole booklet of, um, you see we got measurements and torque specs and these how these hub rings go on and uh, yeah, how the bracketry works, all that. I'll be going over everything, so just bear with me. Hopefully, I know the rears are going to be easy. I mean, that's, there's no way that that's going to be hard. And I think this is just going to take the alignment section. It's going to be probably the longest bit. And then getting these uh, this stud conversion on. Because I don't think... It says not to drive the car for X amount of time. So we might not even drive the car tonight. But I'll definitely have this in the video. Um, and one of the biggest things I want to see is the weight difference. So I already weighed. I had some OE rotors in the attic. So I pulled those out last night. And the difference is, I think, 22.9 to 14.8 for the new rotors up front. And then it's a almost exactly two pound difference from the OE rear rotor to the ECS rear rotors. So it's already some weight savings. And these calipers, I mean, with the bracket and everything, has got to be like a quarter of the weight of the front brakes, the front calipers. So we'll see. I'll get everything on the scale for you guys and we'll... Uh, We'll see how this goes. I'm really excited. So I'm going to stop talking now and, uh, and get to it. Alright guys, before we really get started, I'm already done. I just want to show you all the tools I used. So you got these guys. You got a brush to clean off the rotors and the hubs and stuff. Hammer. Definitely need some type of... Uh, definitely need some type of breaker bar. You got your big boy, your medium boy, your small boy, a scribe set of allen keys this allen key is for the willwoods it is a 3 16 and you got um, a quarter inch uh, for the willwoods as well and then 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 19 22 some clippers in case you got some zip ties or something you got a t27 and a t25 a 7 16 also for the willwood m14 for the rears a 22 a 21 some Loctite, some extensions, adapters. Definitely want brake parts cleaner. Impact if you got it. And that's pretty much it other than the tools to take off wheels, some lights. Um, that's about all I use. Of course, jack, jack stands. All right, just wanted to give you guys a good look here how ugly this, these stock bolts are and how close, Let's see if I can get it to, focus in here yeah, how close my brake caliper sits to the wheel without a five millimeter spacer these calipers would be hitting like it is close close the wheel woods shouldn't be like that I think I should be able to run this without a five mil spacer we're about to find out which should be dope because I got 10 mils in the rear but it makes them rub so it'd be nice to put this five mil in the back call it a day but this is what we're looking at here in a little bit we'll have studs on and some nice rotors and some nice brakes. Alright, so to unlock the rears with an electronic parking brake, I believe we'll go to go to car, go to apps, type in brake, brake pad replacement, boom. And we'll select value. We want to open the calipers. Right on. Hit go. Should hear some noise back here. Hmm. Well, I guess they're open. Easy enough. Ooh, and just a quick plug for myself. This is like the best mount ever. It's a little pop socket mount. We got the uh, channel pop sockets made. I've, I've got a bunch of these. If you guys want one, I don't know, 10, 15 bucks. That's what I'm looking at. I have quite a few left still. And it's nice. It's like a $5 mount. Stick that baby anywhere. It's nice with it. It's a good, it's real good. All right, one side on the back done. We're about to start on the first one for you guys. I um, just wanted to show you the difference in uh, rotor weight. So we'll do it. The OE versus the stop tech slotted versus the ECS two piece. So we'll throw these on the scare real quick and then uh, take off the back rotor and pads. 
and caliper and replace the pads and the rotor. All right, we'll go with the OE rotor first. This baby on. Zero. OE rotor is 14.6. Make sure that's right. I'm gonna do it a couple times. Fourteen point six. Okay, so fourteen point six for the original. I'm gonna go for the stop tech that is way more worn than that one, so the weight might be a little off, but fourteen point six. Oh, they're like exactly the same. Would you look at that? Reset. 14.6 it is. All right. Yes. 13 zero. So about a pound and a half. Better than nothing. 13 flat, it works for me. Now, this is the, the rigging I had to use. Throw an open-ended wrench on a ratchet to give me some leverage to get this top caliper bolt off. They're extremely tight. There's two of them back there, I'll show you. You can see where I took this one off already and this one up there. It's an M14 triple square, and they're extremely torqued. But once you get these off, um, and the parking brake is already undone, already have the uh, brake line undone, so we'll pull this off, put the piston in, change the brake line, and put it all back together. All right, once your two bolts are off, I'm gonna go ahead and finish taking off this uh, brake line. Put that to the side, there's an electrical connector on this and I'm going to take off as well with my scribe that way I can just have the whole caliper on the floor to screw these the piston back in so if you can see right here is electrical connector and that'll unhook this whole assembly pop it right off Jesus Christ well there's a So now we're going to disassemble this caliper real quick. Doesn't take much. We'll take off this retainer. That side. Boom. Comes off. And this whole assembly should basically just slide out. Drop the pads. Now my eye sweeps didn't come with these backing plates. So um, I'll pop these off. Clean them up. And put them on the new ones. Those out of the way. These are the EBC yellows after quite the amount of miles. So they've seen better days. But wait till you see the fronts. The fronts look awful. We'll clean these up real nice. Get some grease. You want to grease these slider pins up. And then we'll have to sit here and screw this piston back down in. So using this cheap piston tool the head doesn't spin and just pushes this whole thing down this is kind of it stays pressured on the the piston but it doesn't spin and you got these little spots here where like a good piston kit will lock into these spots and twist the whole piston in there's a lot of people in the comments in my last video doing brake sand and they just pushed it in by hand or used like some leverage to do it that ain't working i tried it I tried it for like 20 minutes, it was not working. I had to put this one there and with enough pressure it would spin some on its own, but every so often it gets kind of stuck. So I've been taking this flathead in here with a little hammer. And it'll start to spin again. Let's see. And I can, using my open-ended wrench leverage again, spinning this thing. 
just sit here and sit here and spin, 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 spin. The last, the other side gave me a lot of trouble. I did not want to go in. So I'm making sure this one is down, down, down before I even try and put these pads back on. Oh, see that time it moved a little bit. Oh, this is a workout. Let me get stuck. Take the hammer again. So on and so forth. It really ain't that bad once you figure out what you're doing with one side. But I highly recommend renting a kit from like AutoZone. Um, you get your money back. It's definitely worth the time, I'd say. Now we can put this baby back together. If you'll take your solder piece, pop that back in the holes. Boom, boom, slide it all the way in. Grab your pads. The one with the spring on it will go on the caliper side, and that's the same. I carried over that same uh, bracket from the other one. So, put that bitch back on there. Pop down in there. Boom. Slide it forward a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. We'll get the other one in there. Boom. Pressure on it. Boom. So now it's ready to go on. See how she looks here. But I'm going to replace this brake line first. And then we'll slap this on. Alright, so first things first, you got this brake line clip. I kind of popped it off partially so you could see it. I just kind of got a flathead under this lip. Got it out. Now I can go into the top. Pull it off. And you got your brake line. They can, can pop through here. I think it's 11 and a 16, I think. We'll find out. Yep, 11 and 17. Well, the battery died in the last clip. It's an 11 and a 17. Comes right off. We'll replace it with the new one. Now these brake lines are keyed. So you got a flat side here. You see it's flat. More flat than the rest. And on the back side, you have like a keyway. And that's going to determine the way it fits into that... Uh, slot where it meets the other hard line so be aware of that you can push this down into the spot and then the other but this can hold still and then the other spot just screws right into this and the threads it doesn't use as much threads as the oem so there is a couple threads sticking out with these uh 034 lines but then and then and this half this is separate like you can spin this separately so you can like kind of make the line bend however you want once it's installed to make it not rub the other side it was trying to rub some some stuff so I had to when you look here you see that that spot that groove that's where that clips gonna go so you want to make sure that you're pushing this down far enough once it's in there so you can get that clip on I torqued it to uh really tight and hopefully it won't leak ah! now for the easiest part of this whole rear section we will boom and now we will clean up a bunch of rust Well, I had a clip of me putting this on, but I left it on uh, time lapse, so my bad. <laughs> but uh, I mean, it's really simple. You place it on, you put your screw back in, tighten it down. There you are. She's on. She looks real pretty. Um, all these, all the hardware is already tightened and 
Loctite from the factory. I did give them a little, picked out a couple random ones, make sure that they were to my standard of tight just to make sure. But there that is. Now we can throw the rotor on, and then the brake line, and then uh, get our wheel studs on. See how everything looks. Now I'll try and stay out of the way as much as I can, but it's kind of impossible. So remember, under that electrical connector, we got the brake line, but uh, as long as that stuff's out of your way, just bring it on in. electrical connector on force is bad mama jamba giving me a hard time this damn camera in my way it needs to go You can see the distance between the pad and the inner rotor is like, I mean, there's barely any room. Barely. So I try to get this caliper on as far as I could. I put in one of the caliper bolts up top and kind of just wiggled the whole assembly until I got threads. Tightened that one, went down the bottom, kind of did the same thing. Uh, make sure my electrical connection is good. Bolts are in. Now we'll torque those down and uh, get this brake line on which is very simple. You got your new, new bolt. All right, see it's got the hole through the center. Sorry about the focus. Come on, there we go. So you just got the hole through the center. You got one washer here and then you'll put it through the brake line and then another washer goes on top of it. So copper washers will be on both sides of this. Whatever one to focus, sorry, but it'll go on like that. And see how I got the brake line on and routed. And like I said, this whole top piece, this will turn. So you can turn this to make the brake line kind of sit wherever you want. And now we'll put on this uh, springy doha here. They really don't even, I guess it kind of, it puts pressure on the two different pieces here and helps it do its job, I guess. I don't know, but it ain't too hard to put on. Stick it in one hole, pop it around, stick it in the other hole, pop it around, give her a little tappy tap. Boom. It ain't going nowhere. Now check out these bad boys. I already got them in on the other side. They're just so pretty. I know they're not going to last staying pretty after one or two times taking the wheel off, but I'm enjoying for now. We'll see. So I was told by other people to use some red lock tight instead of the recommended blue, something a little more high temp. And uh, yeah, just a dab on the threads, torque them down to 30 foot pounds. Good to go. What does it say here exactly? Uh, tighten up to around 30 foot pounds and wait about three hours for the Loctite to go off fully. That's a weird way of saying it. 19 mil socket, lower the vehicle back on the floor and torque the nuts to 90 foot pounds. And recheck the torque of the studs after 30 minutes of driving. So, we shall do that. It's a really simple process here. Boom. 
boom. You get the point. from 30 foot pounds now that we're done with the rears we got the close option on and uh, we'll let it rip we should make some noise hmm last time it well should work all right guys we'll go ahead and weigh the old stuff real quick before we install I already did the other side so we're gonna do rotor versus rotor so the stop tech slotted I had on 23.6 all right and this is significantly later at 14.3 all right now we can do The stock caliper with the bolts and brake pads. Damn it. Sixteen point three. Make sure that's right. Do it again. Sixteen point three. Alright. You guys keeping track? Because I'm not. I'm just gonna weigh them both together. Alright. See what's the new caliper with bolts and pads way nothing <laughs> wow I don't know what the threshold is for this but uh it's a lot lighter <laughs> holy shit all right let's just do let's do the Wilwood caliper plus oh Doing it together. 22 pounds on the dot. Let's try this again, make sure we're right. 22 pounds on the dot. So the rotor and caliper weigh less than the caliper, the OEM caliper. That's crazy. Let's see what these are. Oh my god, this has got to be like fucking 50 pounds. 42, so 42 versus 22. Holy crap. Get a picture of that. Stock, 42. Let's play that one more time, make sure. 42 on the money, holy crap. That is heavy. Put this back on. Twenty-one five. Let me get her back. Twenty-one five. All right, guys. I don't mind my mess down here, but she looks good. This is a dope kit. It really is. Only thing that's kind of weird is the brake line's kind of short, so you gotta route it kind of funny, but uh. Yeah, I'm digging this. Let me show you how to do it. First things first, we'll undo this clip for the brake line, and then uh, loosen it up there, and then bring the brake line around so it can sit on this side and drain, and then we'll take off. You got this nut, and then the corresponding one under it. And then there's two on the back that are pretty beefy. And it's just those four and this whole thing comes off other than the brake line. Really easy. Get that off and it's just as easy putting the BBK on except for you got to do some measuring. It's stupid easy. Way better than dealing with the electric calipers in the rear. Alright, this is bolt number one. It is a 13 mil. Like I said, you'll do the corresponding one down there. You can see right here where the brake line went. That's an 11 mil. And then we'll jump to these. 
which I believe are a 21 mil. You got two of those, one and two. I said the other two and that, and then the whole thing just pops right off. Very simple. And on the other side, you got your uh, brake pad wear sensor, and uh, ECS sells um, deletes for that for like 20 bucks. So just on the other side, is just an extra electrical connector is all. You can see right here, this intersection wants to spin, so you got to put something on that, keep it from from spinning. That way you can take this bowl off, and that goes for the bottom too. These are for the 13 mils. Not sure how well you guys can tell here, but I have the rotor, the whole assembly kind of angled. That way I can get a better reach to breaking these. I sat in the front of the car, kind of laid under it, and pulled the bottom one forward. Now I'm pulling this one back. I kind of just broke it loose, so. There we go. And that's the hardest part about this whole thing is getting the caliper bolts in the rear and the caliper bolts in the front. Other than that, everything's pretty freaking easy. I mean, I haven't obviously bled the system yet, but and that's just going to be time consuming. It's not really hard. Right, let's get this baby off. Alright, bottom bolt out. Ugh. If I do this wrong, the whole thing is going to fall to the floor. Right. Um, we have no issues with the dust shield or anything, so that was nice. And I'll lay the rotors on top of one another and you can see the difference in size. So you got to hold on to this caliper because it's going to want to fall if you do the bottom one first. Boom! whole thing comes off. Really, I guess those first two nuts, two, first two bolts I was telling you about, you don't need to even do them. Just the, just the big ones. My bad. I'm just too used to undoing those to do pads and stuff, I guess, and check up and clean on things, so. And just beware, you're gonna have brake fluid everywhere. It's gonna leak out of everything, and obviously have brake fluid to be putting in the car. I would assume that's what you're doing when you're doing this, partially at least. And uh, that's all I got. Alright, and here's a size comparison. Um, the light kind of messes it up, but you got that's how much smaller it is than the OE rotor. I tried to center it as best as I could. Not even a, you know, it ain't much. It really ain't much. Not much at all, especially, I mean, for the weight savings and everything, like, yeah, I'm down with it. Six pistons under a 17 inch wheel, two piece rotors. I'm good with it. Ah, it looks so good. All right, before we start and do calipers and stuff, we will, there's another one of these clips here. Pull that baby off and this will break loose. remember they're keyed a certain way but anyway we'll loosen up the nut it's a uh, 18 on the big side 11 on the small side break it loose and uh, replace the line real quick Prepare yourself for more mess. So the brake kit comes with multiple pieces. You got this one, goes on to the caliper. Obviously you got this big adapter piece. This goes to your, um, the hard line that stays on the car. So it doesn't matter what side you use, they're both same. Screw one side on here. This will go to the hard line. And then this side will go to your caliper. I'll go over here. and attach it up there with the big side. Now remember when you're putting this on, you got 11 up top, you gotta hold this 18, and you got 11 on the bottom. Both of those need to be tightened to this. Now the only discrepancy I have about this kit so far is that this 
So you got this adapter piece. You could probably, well, I mean, not probably, you definitely could, uh, clearance this out a little bit, but this doesn't go through that hole. And without that going through, the clips there don't have a use. So it's just kind of like almost fits, but just doesn't. That's my only complaint so far. I don't really, it doesn't really bother me that much. I just wish it wasn't. <laughs> so, I take that back. After I got off the camera, I was like, you know what? Good enough is not good enough. So I was going to clearance it, make it fit. So I undid the top nut, pulled it out of the way, and then just was kind of finagling it, seeing where I would need to, you know, like grind or something. And if you get it at the right angle, in and then it'll it'll pop and come up it's a pain in the butt but it actually does fit it does work you see it's very very sturdy now so forgive me on the last clip but hey it works so that's a good sign all right next up we'll get the rotor which I've already cleaned the back off of but it probably needs it again yeah it does clean your rotors before you put them on all right once your rotor is nice and clean Make sure not to touch at least the back of it. Um, you always want to clean them though because there could be like stuff on it from the factory. You don't want on there. So make sure you do that. Have your rotor key ready to install. But if you're doing a stud conversion like moi, it's not, oh, actually I forgot something. There's an adapter ring that goes in here that comes with the kit. And see this guy right here it's kind of beveled at lips you want the larger part in the back sitting like that so, throw that on here real quick oh no no we won't because we didn't clean this one jesus christ getting ahead of myself i apologize for that guys i've been getting ahead of myself a lot of interruptions with my phone and this, that, and the third while trying to do this today, but here we are. And you got your hub clean, the back of your rotor's clean. It's time to put your rotor on. Got your hub ring. We'll just kind of set it there nicely for now. I'll align it better when I get the rotor up to it. Make sure it's gonna go on right. Good to me. What the hell? Now, going by the book, it says to put your bracket on first. So those real big, hard to take off bolts on the last one is where this will go. It will go through the knuckle and into this. Now you got these spacers and there's a ton of them you can see on the other side it only took me two and what this is the caliper goes on here right so those spacers will will show you imagine the rotors in the middle and it's going to change the center because you, you want it as centered as possible so that's what these washers do and you have other washers sitting right here that control that they go on here they control how high the rotor or the caliper sits so you can get the brake pad to sit where you want it on the rotor if that all makes sense so we'll take the bracket we'll take these we'll go thread them in on the rotor looking over you can see where I placed my bolt here with my washers my two washers right there and they got uh, it's weird to see on camera same as right here now we'll take this bracket, which sensibly only goes on one way, it's notched. You'll see where the notch fits. And we'll slide it on and snug her down. Now you guys can kind of get a better look. Those washers are pushed in the middle there and that will change the center of the caliper once it's, once it's on. And like I said, these right here control the height of the caliper to control where the uh, brake pad sits. So. 
the book recommends to start with two back there on the big ones and it says to start with you always have the black one and it, it recommends to start with two and that was perfect for the other side so let's hope it stays the same I don't want to sit there and do a bunch of measurements again but there you go I put a couple cranks on these just to get them snug down not torqued you'll want red loctite on everything but uh we'll slide the caliper on see how she sits all right, this only goes on one way. So you got the arrow on the piston itself, or the, the piston, the caliper itself, to tell you which way the rotor needs to be spinning. There's also a mark on the rotor itself, tell you which way it should be spinning. You got that on, there's a washer and a lock nut that goes on here, which both should get red Loctite, but now we're gonna check and see if we're center. This is kind of sort of difficult. No, it's super difficult to show on camera because of where the caliper sits. But you got space on this side, space on that side. I'm going to slip the, the brake pads in and then use a washer and see if there's any play on either side. You know, space. And if it needs more, needs to come out more this way or more in that way, then I'll remove or add a washer. It's that simple. All right, so clearance is good. Got the pads in. One thing I really like about this kit is, I mean, the pads just go in through the top. It's really easy. You got this bolt. You get, well, I'm gonna stick this in. Got this that goes through here. Nut on the back. Super easy pad swaps. Super easy. Now, the only thing I can really talk about, once again, is brake line stuff, because it, it's not as long as the OEM. So it doesn't route in the same spots as OEM. So it has to. I'm having it to go behind the uh, strut here. And it's having to make sure it's not gonna hit anything, which is gonna be tough because there's like it could get stuck under here. I mean, I don't think it's gonna get overextended by any means. But uh, I might zip tie it to something so it can at least. I don't know. But for now, I got my homie over here. He just came over. We're gonna bl start bleeding these brakes. Probably won't record much of it. And he said to only use the topmost one on the front. On the rear, you don't have an option. There's only one spot. Um, that's about all I got. Tighten this down. Oh, and some of the things are metric. Like these bolt nuts up here are metric. They are 7 16 And you got this. This is some type of weird Allen. Uh, 3 16 But an 11 fits on the nut. So... There you go. But this, this BBK is easy as hell to install. I mean, you got four bolts, a couple washers, throw your pads in, your pad lock, uh, and uh, you're good to go. Bleed them. They look great. Uh, once they're bled, I'll go over here with the, we'll slap the wheels on. You can see how they look. I still need a five millimeter spacer to clear um, the face of my wheel to this part of the caliper. I tested it on the other side. But other than that, that's about it. Make sure you guys, if you got any questions, if I forgot things, I'm very forgetful. So drop them down below, let me know what I missed or how I can help. Link for this kit is in the description, as always. Boom. Alright, well, we uh, we bullshit a bit last night, had a couple beers. Got these brakes bled with barely, I had two things of fluid, used all of it. And I'm like barely sitting above the minimum, so I need to order a couple more cans of fluid, but here we are everything looks great i'm so happy with the way everything looks i'm still not exactly sure about these brake lines i was just talking about but damn does this ever look good so what i'm going to do i'm going to start the car while it's on jack stands and put it in gear i want to make sure that the rotors aren't hitting the uh dust shields at all behind the rotor because i was kind of like pulling and pushing on them earlier when I was getting bolts in and stuff so when I was spinning this front right one by hand you can kind of hear it hitting the caliper so I kind of bend it back some um, I just want to make sure it's not rubbing anywhere and then uh, you know hit the brakes a few times make sure there's no initial leaks when we were bleeding it I did have one leak on the back of the front uh, driver side caliper the uh, little 90 degree guy that goes into the caliper itself was leaking so I gave that another 180 or 360 of a turn got it nice and tight um 
Oh, in the order of operations for bleeding, you're going to go passenger rear, uh, driver rear, passenger, and then uh, driver side front. And there's four there's four spots to bleed from on each of these wool wood calipers. So you got the top, the bottom, and you have the back side, top, and bottom. So you don't touch the bottom ones at all because these calipers can technically be flipped. They just they're all designed, you know, whatever. But you want to do the outside closest to your wheel, top one, and then the back side. So you'll have one, two, you'll have six different ports you got to bleed uh, during the whole bleeding process. So you just want to have a buddy pump, 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 and he holds the brake all the way down. You open the valve and you let fluid go through, close it up, and you just keep repeating until you don't get. Um, any bubbles or if you're just doing fluid you'll do it until you see the new color of fluid come through depending on how bad your fluid is you'll be able to tell the color difference my fluid was pretty disgusting like it's nasty definitely needed a change it was definitely time um and there is some companies out there that make colored fluid i think there's one that makes some blue and then like a, a regular so then you just alternate so you can see when the new fluid's coming through I'm not that fancy. My exposure is way off. There we go. So I'm gonna start the car, let her spin a few times, hit the brakes a few times, make sure there's no leaks again. I didn't do it last night because the, all the Loctite I use on all the bolts and the studs, it said take like three hours. So I wasn't, I was beat after all that. So we'll start her up, see how she looks, go lock to lock, make sure the line isn't getting hung up somewhere and maybe throw some zip ties on. Nothing's rubbing, everything looks good, no leaks yet, nice.